are now entering live. Hola, bienvenidas a la clase con Smashbox. Hola. So people are joining and we'll give them a few minutes. Bienvenidas todas. Si desean participar activamente como panelista, levanten la manito azul y las, las convertimos en panelistas. Todo quien quiera participar puede levantar la manito azul y las incluimos felices. So I'm, I'm telling everyone that if they want to participate as a panelist to raise their little blue hand so that they can join as a panelist. So our participants are joining us via video. Hello. There we go. <laughs> Vamos a darle unos minutos para que la clase inicie. Qué bueno saludarlas a todas. Todo quien quiera participar como panelista, simplemente levante la manito azul, por favor. Así que bienvenidas todas y bienvenidos. También. Veo muchas manitas azules. Vamos a promover a panelistas. Hola. <laughs> we'll give it one more minute and then we'll start and um, we will have people join late and it's totally fine. Ok, quienes deseen eh, entrar a ser panelistas pueden levantar la manito azul, eh, así que las esperamos. Y voy, voy a dar inicio a la clase. Yo soy Claudia, la fundadora de Blush Park. Qué felicidad tenerlas acá. Esta es nuestra clase súper especial con Lori Taylor Davis, que es la Global Pro Artist de Smashbox, una de mis marcas favoritas. Eh, Smashbox es una marca como ustedes saben, que fue la primera en crear el concepto del primer. Es una marca cruelty free, creada en estudios de fotografía en California. Entonces, es un enorme orgullo tener a Lori aquí con nosotros. Lori va a hablar inglés. Yo voy a traducir solamente la parte donde ella habla de ella misma. Y luego en el chat, el equipo Blushfire estará traduciendo todo al español a medida que, que Lori va haciendo el look de maquillaje Smashbox. So with that, Lori, I'll, I'll leave, uh, pass the word to you to introduce yourself and, and say hi. Hola, everyone. I am so, so excited to be a part and actually be asked to be a part of what Blush Bar has going on, bringing you makeup content, which I think is so awesome. And it's really kind of connecting us all in the world, which just really makes me excited because I feel like makeup is the language that really collect, connects us all. Um, Smashbox is just so honored, of course, to be a part of this makeup series. And I hope you learn a lot today and really take away some of my kind of studio tips and tricks. And if you have any questions about anything I'm doing, please, please, please just type them on in. Um, I have actually been, oh, do you want to go translate? I'll, I'll, I'll say something about it. So, eh, Lori nos habla de que ama la marca Smashbox, obviamente, eh, ha pasado muchos años en la marca y le encanta dar tips de maquillaje, sobre todo porque el maquillaje es una conectividad entre todos, nos conecta, eh, los productos nos conectan a todos, entonces ella está feliz de compartir con nosotros hoy todos sus tips y trucos más importantes. And you can maybe uh, talk about your career a little bit yes. and we can get yes. started. Cool. Fantastic. So I have been um, the in-house makeup artist at Smashbox for 18 years. 
Um, the brand has been around a considerable time before that, and I have had the honor of really helping a lot of the departments at Smashbox, like product development and training, create education and products that you guys actually get to see at Blush Bar, which I think is fantastic. My career started um, literally at a makeup counter so, so, so many years ago. Um, I don't want to age myself, so I won't tell you how many years ago. It was a while. And I started when there was actually, Mac was not even a brand that you could buy and there was no internet. So now you do the math from there. Okay, I'll, I, I love <laughs> to translate that. That's, that's fantastic. Entonces, Lori lleva 18 años en la marca Smashbox eh, como artista de maquillaje y hoy en día como lead artist. Ha participado en el desarrollo de entrenamientos de Smashbox, desarrollo de todos los nuevos productos que nos llegan de la marca. Empezó su carrera en un counter de maquillaje en un momento donde Mac no existía y no había internet. O sea que hace mucho tiempo eh, de momento. Um. So I basically kind of came to the Smashbox um, by way of just from the brands that um, I had seen when I was working in the department stores that I was working in. And they were a very small LA brand um, owned by the great grandsons of Max Factor and they had a makeup studio. So it was studio makeup, two guys, Max Factor. And that really just piqued my interest. Um, Entonces un poquito de la historia de Smashbox eh, fue empezada por los dos nietos de Max Factor, que obviamente fue un creador de una marca importantísima de maquillaje, en un estudio de maquillaje, dos hermanos, y ahí los conoció Lori. Um, so at the time I was working in store because I was saving up, going to save up some money because I thought I was going to move to New York to go to makeup school because there weren't that very many makeup schools in, in the Los Angeles area, believe it or not, at the time. And um, I was like, I'm going to work at the counter. I'm going to kind of learn about makeup. And then I'll go to makeup school in New York. Entonces, aprendió eh, a maquillar, obviamente, estando en el counter de maquillaje. Y luego se fue a eh, escuela de maquillaje en Nueva York. I, I think we'll get some questions um, about um, your trajectory. Um, and they're asking about your Instagram. We'll share that in a moment as well. Okay. Is asking sure. about it. But I think if you want to um, get started with the look, describing the look. For and sure. We'll get For sure. Into For Spanish. sure. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Perfecto. So you got it. It's Smash. Perfect. So for me, at Smashbox, you know, makeup, no makeup goes on unless you have a primer. So the primer that I'm going to be using, one of the primers, because you can use multiple primers in creating any look. And I'm going to start off first by using our primerizer, which is my favorite primer of choice because I'm going to be applying our full coverage foundation. And that is more of a matte foundation that's long wearing. 24-hour wear, has all these ingredients that really help it to stay on and look like skin and be comfortable. And I just need a little bit more hydration to my skin before I apply it. So I'm gonna use two, maybe three pumps, and I'm just gonna apply that to my skin for that gorgeous kind of hydration first. And the great thing about primerizer is it really just helps to give that hydration. It's perfect for any skin type, not just any um, dry skin. It's really great for oily skin in place of, let's say a regular moisturizer because it will not make you any more oily. The foundation I'm gonna be using is our full coverage 24 hour wear foundation, which this is my makeup go-to. I love this foundation simply because it covers everything and but it looks like skin and never ever feels uncomfortable i'm going to be applying that using a full coverage foundation brush one of the things i love about this foundation i love to use the full coverage foundation brush is you just bounce it into the skin should make it my mirror you bounce it into the skin and what you'll notice is it instantly creates a perfected canvas. I don't know if you guys can see how that's just going on. It is, has maxed out pigments that actually have a little bit of drying time to it. So when you first apply it, it kind of goes on and it's one color and then you just kind of, it just kind of sets and becomes your true color. And a tiny, tiny bit is all you need. I say 
about the size of a pea is perfect. And I like to kind of get it into my neck as well. The color that I'm using is 3.18 on my skin, has more of an olive undertone. And what you'll see is it just kind of gives you that perfected, perfected canvas. And that's it. Tiny amount, bumped into the skin. Lori, we're getting a question if the foundation is for all skin types. Estoy haciendo la pregunta que, que, que si es para todo tipo de piel. All skin types. It's perfect because at Smashbox, we don't really sell foundation for skin type because we can, we have primer that kind of makes your skin the best that it can be. So this particular foundation is perfect for every skin type. And again, you don't need a lot of it. You just don't need a lot of it, which is great. Next, I'm going to apply a little bit of lid primer because I want to prep the area that I'm going to be actually applying makeup to first. So I'm going to be using our photo finish lid primer. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah. And the thing I love about this is it just takes a little bit of product to kind of even out the eye area. I normally do like two or three dots and you can actually just tap it in with your finger. What you're going to notice is it's going to brighten your lid area, which is fantastic. And I like to take it right up to my brow. Because what that does, it creates that matte surface and highlight it that really works to help brow, brow product to also hang on. So just a couple swipes. And I love to kind of brighten that eye area. So again, to smooth it in, it's really hydrating, which is fantastic. So I'm creating that kind of like perfect canvas, getting everything, I'm gonna get, oops, everything is just gonna kind of get super perfected and ready to receive a little bit of makeup. Now next, I love concealer because I tend to be very dark underneath. And the color that I'm going to be using is our light, medium, warm peach. And the reason why I'm choosing that particular color is I really want to kind of brighten this whole under eye area. Can you and I'm going to do it. Just repeat the product name and the shade, please. Okay. It is our, sorry, I just jumped ahead. It's our Studio Skin 24-hour yeah. concealer. That lasts a full 24 hours, never creasing. And the shade that I'm choosing is light, medium, warm peach. So for me, I really want to kind of brighten the under eye area. So I tend to choose a shade that's a little bit more peachy or warm. So it just kind of gives that kind of brightness to the under eye area. So I love to get right in this inner corner. I think a lot of people don't concentrate on that inner corner that holds a lot of darkness. And I will normally do like two or three dots and then I'll do one dot right down to my nostril. So what that's gonna do is we're gonna blend all that in. It's gonna really add that kind of lift and brightness. And I'm gonna be using my buffing concealer brush. And I just kind of buff and pat that into the skin. And what you're gonna see is instantly gonna create all that super bright that I want for my under eye area. Like it's, I like to say that it almost like makes you look like you're a little snatched. Get it right into the under eye as well. And I don't know if you could see the difference between one side to the other, it just looks like whoosh. Cause we want everything to go this way and nothing to go that way. <laughs> so I'll do the other side, a few dots. You don't need a lot of this product. And just buffing it in, but really getting that inner corner is so, 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 so key. And then again, just buffing it down to the side of the nostril to really create the brightness and then blending out. And I like it to seem a little bit brighter. There we go. And then I kind of drag it around. Lori, uh, Maria Jose is asking, is it better to apply the concealer with dots instead of covering the whole area? Maria I Jose, feel like, uh, I'm, I'm going to say, say it, was, it was in English. Maria Jose okay. está preguntando si utilizar puntitos al aplicar el corrector o aplicar en todo el área. Yes, 
because sometimes if you're swiping it on, you're just using too much product. And the other under eye area is such a thin area that you want to put as little product as possible because as you're adding more steps to your makeup application, you'll see that you'll do things to kind of fight that discoloration. So dots are little and then you're just going to kind of buff it in. Works so much even better than like swiping or patting. So less is more. Sheer layers is always the best way to go. I Great. Perfect. All right, so next I'm gonna to jump to brows. So I'm gonna be using our Brow Tech To Go in Brunette. And I love this particular product for two reasons. Number one, I have very thin eyebrows, as you can see, So and brows are my thing. I normally have on glasses, so all you can normally see are brows. You can't even see it in my makeup application at times. I love this because it's a powdery pencil on one side, and on the other end is like a gel that helps it to set. And one of the key things I always like to say is you're going to start very, very, very lightly where you have the least, where your brow is the most shallow. So not, you're not going to start in the front. Oh my God. There Sorry, go. guys, you're not going to start in the front and go to the bend. You're going to basically just start where your brow, and my brows are really shallow, kind of in the middle here. And the color that I'm using is brunette because I have a little bit of red undertone to my hair. So I'm gonna start in the middle and I like to go back and forth. We tend to only go in one direction and at times that you're just laying color on your brows. If you're going opposite of the way that the brows grow in, you're gonna build color at the base. So your brows will look a little bit more natural. So I'm gonna kind of just go back and forth, back and forth. Like I'm just literally drawing them in and building them up. And I always love just a little bit of a wing to frame the eye, which is fantastic. And as you guys can see, my brows, they always need a little bit of work because I over, I over tweezed in my teens and I'm paying for it nowadays. So again, just a little bit, starting where they're the most shallow and then just moving out and about. A little and then going all the way until I build up enough color and then I'm just kind of gonna flick them up to really get that product all the way through and I'm gonna turn the product over and I'm going to use the you're losing your sound Lori, are you there? We lost you for a second. I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. Sorry, I don't know what happened. Technical difficulties. <laughs> there we go. So there we have. And I think brows are a really important part of any makeup because they really help to frame the eye. And I am just such a brow person in general. So if I do nothing else, I'm always doing my brows and I'll do a bold lip. And it's so much easier to get dressed on Monday morning if you just do brows and lips, which are fantastic. So I'm just kind of setting the, setting the base for my eyeshadow application. So I will probably go back in after all this is over and do a little bit more fine tuning, but we're gonna jump ahead and we're going to start with our eyeshadow palette. And the eyeshadow palette that I'm using today is our Ablaze palette. I don't know if you guys can see those yummy colors. Everything, it kind of looks like a California sunset, which I absolutely love. And I love the cover shot in a blaze because it's just so warm and these colors look great on any skin tone. This is one of the, um, when we were developing our cover shot palette series, it was one of the eyeshadow palettes that the artists at Smashbox were able to do all by ourselves. They just kind of put us in a room full of color and we helped to actually develop this palette and it's actually been one of our best-selling palettes. So makeup artists love makeup, there you go. So I'm going to start first by using a very rustity, this tone here, this very rustity tone. And the reason I'm doing that is because I love to get color all the way around the eyes. I think sometimes we're using so many pencils and so many kind of harsh lines. I like things to be a little bit softer and a little bit more diffused. So I'm gonna be using that more russet color. And I'm going to start close 
always starting my makeup application close to the lash line and then going gradually up. And what you'll notice is I'm just going to pull up and blend up until it's a sheer wash. And I really love this one of this tone is barely really, really kind of on trend right now because it's that kind of warm, not deep brown, just something that's a little bit more russety and soft. And I'm going to go right all the way up to just above my natural crease. And see how that's just a quick, even if you only have two minutes to do makeup, just a super soft up to your natural crease. And you're like halfway there for your eyeshadow application. What's the name of the shade, um, Lori? The, sh the shade is called, I'm looking, let me look at my, I believe it's called Nirvana. Ah. What's that name? Nirvana. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good one. All right, so now we're gonna do our other eye. Oops, wrong brush. I love everyone following along. Yeah. So cute. It's like, how many things can you hold in your hand? <laughs> yeah. So again, starting, always start, I love to always start close to the lash line and then build up from there because you can always increase the color. It's just always better to start with that soft application and build, build, build. And just go right above that natural crease. Stopping just short of underneath the brow bone. And if you need to add a little bit more on, no problem. Too many things in my head. There we go. Again, natural crease. And see, it's just kind of like that super soft wash. And somebody asked to see the eyeshadow palette. This is our eyeshadow palette again, the Ablaze palette. So the second shade that I'm going to use, and I'm only really probably going to use two or three shades from the palette, is this more cranberry color. And the color is actually called, what is it? Throwback, which is fantastic. And it's this more cranberry shade here. And I'm going to use that actually right at my lash line to add a little bit more soft definition, not a lot. and build the shade up. And what you're gonna see is almost gonna look like a sunset where the deepest shade is at the lash line. And kind of get in that corner in that crease and then build it up from there. And the brush I'm using is a really, really, really kind of tight hair. The thing I like about that, it's really gonna deposit a little bit more color than usual. That looks beautiful. Sarah. Oh my God. Thank you. And I love the, I love tones like this. Now, if you want to go back and take a little bit of the first color to, because I feel like once you put a little bit more on like a deeper color on you, you want to build up. So we're going to go right back with the Nirvana right into that natural crease to kind of build it up, which is fantastic. Curls get in the way. And these tones, I feel like, look great on every skin tone, no matter how fair or how deep, because they're just all so warm. You know, we're getting, it's summer here in Los Angeles, so we're all kind of getting that summer type of mood. Now I'm going to take a little bit more, I'm going to take the Nirvana and the Throwback, and I'm actually going to add the two of them together. And that's going to be my bottom tone. But I don't want something too strong. I want something a little bit, um, a little bit lighter to just kind of really accentuate the shape of the eye and don't be afraid to bring it down. I love a drop shadow and I feel like this drop shadow look is one that we're seeing right now because it's less about super harsh lines and really about making the shadows dropped and kind of moody and this is a look that you can use day or night which is great and then just blend it in. This is like a Lori go-to. 
and then just blend, blend, blend. What you almost want to kind of want to do is you're going to blend it in and drag it down. And I feel like sometimes we're a little bit afraid to put shadow in that bottom, that bottom lash line, but with these kind of soft, warm shades, you can't go wrong. So again, just starting in the center, going back and forth, and really creating that kind of dropped, more moody, kind of smoky, but like daytime smoky. And I always say smoky is a technique, not a color, because whenever we say smoky, I always think black, but smoky is really all about a technique and not just always doing black. And what you're gonna see is you're like, okay, so now this is a little bit, a little bit more edgy, but still very wearable for daytime. All right. Lori, uh, we have a question from Maria Jose. Uh, Maria Jose está preguntando que cuál es el mejor tip de Lori para difuminar. So she wants to know what's your best tip for blending eyeshadow. Okay, my best tip for blending eyeshadow is using a very loose hair brush. Um, I will almost always apply with something that's very dense, but I'm always going to blend with something that's super loose. And don't be afraid to get a little bit of like a neuter shadow on and then just kind of go over. Because the thing is you want one color to bleed into the next. You want to look like it's super, super, super soft. Entonces aplica con una brocha más firme que tenga las cerdas más compactas y firmes, pero difumina con una brocha que tiene las cerdas más largas y sueltas. Y también a veces pasa encima con un color más clarito para seguir difuminando y que los colores tengan una transición perfecta de un tono a otro. There we go. And see how it's just kind of this like soft, like moody, like you can even take it out a little bit more if you're really adventurous. I'm going to stop there because <laughs> this is more of our daytime look. All right, so um, this is when I tend to add a little bit of liner. So eyeliner is so important because it really helps to define it and you can actually even change the shape of your eye depending on you know what shape your eyes have. And I always like to use two different eyeliners. So I will always jump to something a little bit more deep. In this case, I'm gonna use our Always Sharp Eyeliner in Raven, which is fantastic. It always has a sharp tip and uh, the mold is right in the cap, so you don't have to worry about an eyeliner pencil. And then I'm gonna pair that with our gel eyeliner in um, color is Sumatra, no, not Sumatra. This is Brood, I get my names mixed up, in Brood. So I'm gonna use the brown at the bottom and I'm gonna use the black at the top because I really don't want it to be super dark and harsh, but I do want it to have shape and definition. So first I'm gonna apply our Raven eyeliner and I'm gonna use that right Um, and I'm going to tight line. And what tight line means is I'm going to go on the inner part of the eye and I'm going to actually apply more shadow there because it's not really, I don't, I just want my eyes to be, I want the eyes to be defined. I don't really want them to have like a wing or anything like that. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to lay it right in that inner lash line and just wiggle it at that under lash line of my lashes. And what this is really great at doing is really great at making your look like you have a thicker lash line. And I always love that. And it's really soft. But you can almost see it just kind of defines, but softly. So you can still see all the color. Sometimes when you're using black eyeliner at the top, after you've done all this colorful shadow, all you can see is black liner. And this is just a way for that not to happen. So again, tight lining. You're going to go in the under part of the eye. And it takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's just such a great way to define the eyes very softly. And then at my bottom lash line, I'm going to go on the inner rim with Brood. And this is a gel liner that is 100% waterproof, stays in place. And I love it because it just glides right on. It's very, very soft. And it's just like this easy glide. And don't be afraid, like get in there And almost like you want to paint the lashes, the bottom lash line. And you don't, it doesn't have to be neat. It could be a little bit messy. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my eyeshadow brush and I'm going to smudge it. And what that's going to do is just add to that kind of drop shadow that we already did. And really add a little bit of drama. Can you guys see that? Just a little bit of drama. So it's soft on the top and a little bit more dramatic at the bottom. 
So two, just... you're getting two questions, uh, Lori. One is, what's your favorite Smashbox product? <laughs> ¿Cuál es tu producto eh, favorito de Smashbox? Que, que estamos recibiendo esa pregunta. And the second question is, the tight line is on the water line of the eye in the, in the top, right? Entonces, el exactly. tight line es en la línea de agua eh, de la parte de arriba y como vieron es suave arriba y más dramático eh, hacia abajo. Uh, pero vamos a preguntarle a Lori cuál es su producto favorito. So your favorite product. <laughs> My favorite product, it is such a tough one. That's like picking your favorite child. Um, I am going to say, oh my God, I have to say it's the brow tech to go. I'm a brow girl because I don't have any. I have very shallow brows and I feel like brows do so much. So it's a toss up between always on lipstick and brow tech to go. But don't tell anybody then because, yeah. <laughs> so the thing I love about a look like this is you still see all of the color and you have liner, but it's not so, it's and all of this drama at the bottom. And it's just a really kind of modern way to create a smoky eye that's not just so deep and so dark. But you get that, and I haven't even done mascara yet. Because, you know, mascara is the one thing that changes the game. I don't know if you guys as makeup artists or makeup lovers have ever been doing your makeup and you're like, oh my God, what's missing? And it's always mascara. Mascara is so good. So I'm also the girl that will use two different mascaras. That's just how I am. So my two favorite mascaras are, mascara. so I have two favorite mascaras. And I think it's because of my lashes. So I tend to have a very, my lashes aren't super thick. Um, they're a little bit thinner. Um, so I always use, love to use the Smashbox waterproof mascara for my top, my top lash line. And then I use the Smashbox super fan mascara for the bottom. So actually I use the waterproof top and bottom and then just an extra coat of super pot, super fan at the bottom because I feel like I love that very wide open look. So first we're going to use the waterproof. And this is full exposure waterproof? Full exposure waterproof, which is my favorite. You know, it's something about the weight of it and the waterproof really, I really feel like it helps to keep the curl once you curl your lashes and it stays in place. And it just has a different texture. But I love it because, I mean, look what it's doing. Like, see the difference in my, it's crazy. Like, the difference in my lashes just adds the right amount. And once it's on, I don't have to worry about it moving, about anything going anywhere. So I always use a little bit on the tops. And I like to really get it, be sure you really get it into your lash line. And it really just helps to add just the right amount of kind of like lash drama. And then I just do a quick swipe at the bottom because I'm going to use a super fan at the bottom as well. And it just, the texture is just so lovely. I feel like when you're doing mascara, it's like your mouth is always like, uh. <laughs> no one can do mascara with their mouth shut. shut. All right. So there's a little bit of our super fan. I mean, a little bit of our full exposure. And then I'm gonna go right back at the bottom with super fan. Cause I feel like super fan just adds a little bit more thickness. And I really like my bottom lash line to at least try to be close to the top. Cause I got sparse, sparse lashes. Kind of fantastic. Now, this is when I go back in and I give my a blaze palette another go through and I kind of perfect everything that I've done. This is when you can kind of go back and you're like, let me add a little bit more this and a little bit more of that. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the cranberry of that outer corner because I really want to have that really kind of gorgeous shape and I kind of smooth everything down. And I do it after mascara because if a little bit of mascara gets on then it adds to the smokiness, which is so fantastic. This is one of my favorite, favorite palettes right now because it's just, the colors are just so, oh, everything you want them to be. And then I'm going to do a little, some more blending with the first color. And this is how you can kind of go back after mascara. And I feel like you almost want to kind of bump everything back up.
just a little drama. All right, now I've been holding my next, the next application of what I'm gonna be doing, and this is my, one of my favorite products. It is our Cali Condor Palette. Can we just gel on how amazing this product is? Bronzers, highlighters, and a blush. Oh, and I love shaping. I love everything that's gonna give you that kind of like warmth to your complexion. I don't think that anyone can be too tan or too bronzy or too glowy ever. I think I'm, because I'm a California girl, I think beachy bronzy is a makeup staple on everybody's makeup bag <laughs> or every makeup artist makeup kit. So I'm gonna start first by using our contour shade. Lori, um, we have one more question about eyes before we go yes. into contour. Eh, le okay. voy a preguntar a Lori una pregunta que tenemos de Alejandra, que es, ¿qué tips tiene para ojos caídos, para párpados caídos? So, what tips do you have for hooded eyes? Okay, so for hooded eyes, the easiest thing I always say is, when you're going to take your shadow up just above where the kind of, where the hoodedness starts to happen. So, you're going to start at the lash line and just move, and you want one simple wash of color. And with that tone, it should be something that's only a few shades deeper than the natural skin tone. Because all you're trying to do is add different shape to the eye first. And then at the lash line is where you're gonna create all that drama. So you're gonna almost do the same application that I did, but you're gonna start really soft, really soft washes of color and create everything so it creates that shape to the eye. And then, Again, at the bottom, lash line is also a place where you would put, create more shape as well. Okay, con shaping and contour. I'm gonna be using an angled contour brush. I love this simply because of the shape. It really kind of fits into the socket of the cheek and really helps to do a lot of the magic that um, the Cali Contour is really all about. The one thing I can kind of give you, like I guess the best tip ever is when you are doing any type of contour or shaping, you're gonna work into the hollows of the cheek. One of my best guides that I learned early on in, in doing makeup was, the little part of your ear here and your tip of your nose are symmetrical. They form a perfect line. If you stick your brush in, using that as your guide and working as if you're creating a rainbow, so you're kind of going up and over, you'll get this more kind of blended look instead of like anything that's like really stripy. So again, we're going to stick the brush there and just go back and forth. Turn it over if you need be and go back and forth. And you're gonna add contour gradually, very softly. And you don't wanna add too much, you wanna kinda of add a little bit and then take a look in your big mirror. And then do the other cheek, again, working in, towards the nose in that kind of almost like rainbow effect. So you're creating not a stripe, but literally this soft shading that you want. Yeah, I'm gonna do a little bit more. And then you can just add gradually. And it should look like soft shading and it shouldn't really be more too warm, but just something where it looks like I lost 10 pounds the minute I open this palette. <laughs> and if you wanna add a little bit to the jawline as I do. And a little bit here for that really good, I mean, just the thing I love about all these like shaping and shading products is it really is a way to just kind of alter the, or kind of add this definition to your face. And I'm using the contour, contour color from the palette. Perfect, oh my gosh. So, so next I'm gonna choose, um, I'm gonna add a little bit of bronze next. And I'm gonna be using the bronze shade because I wanna add some warmth to my complexion. This will also help to blend in that kind of cooler contour. So I tend to start- I'm asking, um, can you recap the shades that you've used? So the first shade and then the next shade. <clears throat> the first shade is, the first shade is the contour shade, which is the more gray kind of, kind of taupey shade. And that's just to be shading. Using that all over the face is gonna add too much kind of coolness to the skin, but what it's really great at doing is building in that kind of shape and definition to the jawline. 
And as I'm looking, I think I want to add a little bit more shape and definition to the jawline because I've been having a lot of pasta lately. <laughs> Carbs are my friend. <laughs> and that's great too. If you have someone that really wants to kind of break up that jawline, you can take a little bit and bring it all the way down to the neck. And that really just adds that gorgeous shape and kind of gives them a little bit more definition. Now next I'm going to be using our bronzer shape, which is the one opposite here. And I love that. And I kind of add that almost just at the top of where I've, where I've applied my contour. And I start far back in the temple and then just kind of stop right on the apples of the cheeks. Another good kind of tip that I can give is if you stick two fingers on the side of your nose, your bronzer stops and cheek stops right there. So again, come forward and stop. That way you don't get it too close to the center of the face. Just a little bit more bronzer. I'm gonna use a little of in my hairline to break up a really kind of add some warmth. And just, we've all been in the house so long, I feel like I'm, this is my way to have a little bit of summer glow while I'm in the house. <laughs> now you can also, if you want, if you're someone that loves to really contour, you can use, you know, the contour for the, for, you know, contouring the sides of your nose if you want. Then this tip of your nose, just a little bit here to really kind of define the, nose area and really kind of work it in that crease as well. Fantastic. The thing about this palette is it has everything all at the tip of your fingers. I simply love it because it also has my gorgeous highlight shades and I love highlight. So I'm going to mix the two highlight shades here. I like to mix them both. You can use them singular and I'm going to do a little bit down the center of my face. Absolutely love it. And I like highlight to be a little bit more subtle, really kind of getting it in between the eyes here to add all that glow and really bring light to the center of the face. I like, and I'm gonna take it high on that cheekbone. And it should be subtle. I like a little bit of subtle highlight. I like it to look like, mm, did you wake up glowing like that? Not like, ooh, you have a lot of highlight on. <laughs> And then I always love a little bit above my cupid's bow to give me like more of that pouty look and then a little bit on my chin. And I love this because you can really control the amount of highlight that you're using and just build, 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 which I love. And I love how it just kind of adds a lot of light to the center of the face. I wish I had somewhere to go tonight. <laughs> I'm like, I am all dressed up and nowhere to go. <laughs> so yeah, I love that. So this is why I also tend to kind of look back. I think for me, I like to add a little bit more concealer because I love my under eye to really be kind of more lit than with them. So I put on, uh, earlier I was using something that's a little bit more warm and brightening. So now I can use something that's a little bit closer to my skin tone and I'm gonna be using the medium warm again in our studio skin concealer and I'll take that and instead of using a concealer brush I'm going to use a very loose haired almost watercolor brush like a blending brush and I love this because this tip is perfect because it acts as an eraser so you don't want something that's going to pack more product on you literally want something that's just going to kind of erase everywhere that you've touched and make that skin a little bit more perfect So this is when, especially if you're working on your clients and you're kind of touching them a lot then, or even on your face, you just want to kind of go in and kind of do a little bit of cleanup, which is my absolute favorite. Around the nostrils, again, I like to get around the mouth, softening this area here and really kind of creating that perfect, perfect, perfect canvas. I am going to stop in the middle here before I do my lips and I'm going to use a little bit of our Smashbox Primer Water. So remember I promised we were going to be layering primers. So the thing I love about primer, I always do this right before I do my lips, is I wanna really set everything and add a little bit more hydration, because to me, hydration is everything. It makes the makeup look more like it's part of your skin when the skin looks really hydrated. 
and it won't make you shiny and it won't and it won't disturb your the matte foundation that you've put on so i just love a little bit it's like a spa oh my god i wish you guys could smell this it's so amazing it's like a spa in but i do this right before i put on any cheek color because after because i really want my I don't want to disturb my cheek color, and I really want to do it before I put on anything cheeks. So now I'm going to be using the blush after I've highlighted. I do blush last because I feel like blush is almost that just kind of like kiss of color to the skin. And I'm going to be using the blush from the Kelly Contour Kit. And I'm just going to kind of do a little bit on the apples. Because I don't want a lot, I just want a, a little bit of tone, not, let's not a blush moment for me. Just a subtle kiss of color, which is fantastic. And blush is my second favorite thing next to brows, just so you guys know. And see how that just kind of lifts the cheeks and everything. Another way to tie your cheek and your um, eye together is just take a little, take your brush and whatever's left on your blush brush, do that high. So it kind of ties in all the colors that you've previously applied, which is fantastic. There we go. All right, now we're going to move on to a lip moment. So lips are also one of those things that I absolutely love. Um, and I'm all about defining the lips to their fullest. Um, I think in the past we were, it was always like, are you overlining your lip? And actually the tone that is the shaded area here before it goes from color to skin is actually your natural lip line. Most, most of us will always, most of us will always under color or fill in our lips. So I'm gonna color right at my lip line with our Always Sharp Lip Liner. And I love these lip liners because they glide on, they stay on, they don't feather, they don't move, and they have that same mold so they are always sharp. There's something that you do not need a lip sharpener to use. And I'm using Nude Medium. It's kind of like this perfect amount of like rosy lip tone. And it can go with any 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 shade of lip product i tend to always want a more of a nude tone to the lips for any color because that way you won't be stuck with like a harsh lip line when your lipstick wears off so i like to just shade it in and then i'm going to do a little bit shading on the corners to create more of a pout So now I'm ready for my I'm going to be using our Always On lip product, which is absolutely my favorite lip product of all time. So versatile. It is one of my gloss over it. It still will wear beautifully. The two shades I'm going to be using in our Always On liquid lip, which are fantastic, long wearing, comfortable matte color that just looks fantastic. I'm going to be using Out Loud and Babe Alert because I really want to create that sexy pout and I'm trying to stay in the actual tones that I've used on the eyes. So Out Loud is a more terracotta red tone that's really going to, terracotta kind of bricky tone that's going to be really going with my eye and then Babe Alert is going to create that really sexy pout right in the middle. The thing I love about the Always On is also the applicator. It's one of those applicators that it almost just kind of hugs the lips. It's this velvety texture and that chisel point really works to get right at the lip line. And Out Loud is that perfect kind of, it's like reddish, brownish, bricky tone that is so fantastic. I get right at my lip line. Sorry if I don't talk. <laughs> and right there. So then, mm, and it's that perfect, it's like any skin tone can wear it. And then I'm using a little bit of Babe Alert, which is kind of like that more mauve pink. I'm using it right in the center. And what that's going to do is give me a little more definition, you know, more of a sexy kind of pout, which I really, really like for the lips. And then last but not least, <laughs> I love a little bit of gloss. I'm a glossy girl. I don't know. Some people love matte especially with a complexion that's a little bit more matte. I'm a little bit more matte. I'm just kind of highlighting the center of the face. 
But what I really want to do is create that kind of more of a glossy look to the lips. And I'm going to use a tiny bit of our Gloss Angeles Extra Shine on my lips. Now this is a product that I love because not only can it be worn on the lips, it can be worn on the cheek and it can be worn on the eyes as well, which is fantastic. I'm just going to add a little bit of that in the center to add a little bit more moisture to the lip. What do you guys think? I think I need one more thing. There's one more thing I want to share with you guys. I'm going to add a little bit of shine right on the inner corners of my eyes because I really love how it kind of makes them whiter and brighter. So just a little bit of shine, right? There we go. And I used that from the Ablaze palette and the color I used was Nectar. So I used this really kind of shimmery gold right in that inner. You can use a liquid liner to jazz it up and to take it to the next level, but I feel like this is a really great everyday eyeshadow, eyeshadow lip, lip and cheek look. I hope you guys like it. It's amazing, Lori. You look beautiful. Oh I my God. love it and it is so clear. Um, there's a couple Thank more you. questions before we go. Voy a hacerle a Lori un par de preguntas más antes de, de irnos. Um, aquí, te, aquí están preguntando, ¿qué productos de Smashbox consideran que deben ser parte de la maleta de un maquillador profesional? Per, eh, pregunta Laura. Entonces vamos a preguntarle eso a Lori. Lori, you're being asked, what Smashbox product should a professional makeup artist have in his or her kit? I am going to say that the must have for a pro is at least two or three primers because primer will make any makeup product, whether it's Smashbox, gosh forbid, or anyone else's just work better because skin is the most important part of any type of makeup application. So I, my two favorite primers are classic primer, which is, you can't go wrong, it's, the classic primer is so fantastic. Excuse my doorbell. The classic primer or the, um, the primer rise. It's more of a moisturizer. Entonces, nos cuenta Lori que eh, ama el Photo Finish Primer Classic y el Primerizer, que fue el primer primer que usó al inicio de la clase, eh, que da hidratación. Perfect. Um, and then one last question is, um, hold on, I, I was just seeing it. And what is your favorite palette? ¿Cuál es su, pal su paleta favorita? Pregunta Carolina Bernal. What's your favorite eyeshadow palette from Smashbox? What is my favorite eyeshadow palette? Well, she said palette, so you could you could say a face palette and an eye palette. Estamos teniendo problemas de señal o soy yo? No, sí, a ella se le está yendo un poquito. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, there we go. My favorite eyeshadow palette would have to be the Ablaze palette that I just used. It's like a child that I literally gave birth to <laughs> because of the, it was created by uh, the makeup artist at Smashbox and the colors are just, they're timeless. Like it's one of those palettes that you can use on any skin tone that will always look fantastic. Entonces dijo que claramente su favorito es Ablaze por los tonos cálidos tan espectaculares que vimos que funcionan divino en todo tipo de piel. Bueno, vamos a darle las gracias a Lori. Eh, we want to say a huge thank you. You're amazing. Oh, thank you. Sorry, go ahead. Diana, dale tú. Eh, Lori, one oh. last question. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yes. Oh, okay. you can stay. Let's hang out all night. Hang out all night. <laughs> about, about the primers. So what, what primer would you recommend for um, combination? ¿Qué primer recomendaría para piel mixta? The oil and shine control primer is per is perfect. Are my the oil and shine control primer is perfect for combination skin, and you can actually mix this in your foundation to take out a step, which is fantastic. Fantastic. Um, Juliana, quieres hablar de los kits o quieres que yo hable del descuento? Eh, si quieres mencionar el descuento y después hablo de los kits. Bueno, bueno, niñas, entonces, primero vamos a darle así, gracias, Lori, Lori, me encanta oh, compartir este día con ella. 
Y en honor a Lori, vamos a tener un descuento. Eh, el descuento es Lori15. Si puede el equipo Blushfire cambiar el banner Lori15 y se los vamos a mandar a todas por email. Es 15% en todo blushbar.com. Aplica solamente hoy hasta las 11 y media de la noche y pueden comprar esos productos fabulosos de Smashbox que acabamos de ver. Eh, en especial les súper recomiendo el Photo Finish Primer y el Cali Contour que es increíble y esa Cover Shot a Blaze que es una absoluta belleza de paleta. Entonces te paso la palabra a ti Juliana para que eh, hables un poco de los kits. Perfecto, entonces el 15% de descuento va a aplicar pues en todo Smashbox y en el resto de nuestra página, menos unos kits increíbles que tenemos nuevos de Smashbox, súper especiales. Los kits los vamos a anunciar mañana, pero para todas las que se unieron hoy, pues tienen la oportunidad para comprarlos desde hoy, antes de que se agoten. Son kits donde vienen dos primers juntos, tamaño regular, por ejemplo hay un kit que tiene el primer, el Oil Control Primer que mencionaba Lori para piel mixta, y también el setting spray, entonces van a quedar ambos primers en 150 mil. Hay cinco kits diferentes para, pues según su tipo de piel, pueden encontrar mu muchas opciones y todos van a quedar en 150 mil, así que se ahorran mucha plata y ahí pues en esos casos el descuento no aplica porque ya están a un excelente precio, pero para que aprovechen y, y los compran. Los encuentran ahí en la sección de Smashbox y en el correo también les voy a mandar el link directo a todos los kits. Ok, entonces... Thank you, Lori. You're amazing. We love you. Thank so you, much. guys. I love and you guys. Part of, of this class, and thank you so much for teaching us. Gracias. Gracias. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Lori. 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 Thank you. Adiós. Bye. 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 Bye.